It is now time to introduce the Django REST Framework JWT authentication, that is JWT, also known as the JSON Web Token authentication. So web, JSON Web Tokens are used in other frameworks as well. This is not a Django specific thing and definitely not a Django REST Framework specific thing, but this particular project is, right? So this is made specifically for the Django REST Framework. If you found another REST framework that works with Django, this may or may not work for it, but it's definitely not designed for that. It's definitely designed for the Django REST framework, and we're gonna be using REST framework version 3.3, and that's what we've been using, and that's what we'll be doing in this one. Um, so it's fairly straightforward what it is. It's an authentication header that basically is this token that we can pass to, to handle the authentication for us. So when I say authentication, I mean, logging in and then doing some stuff, right? So if we log in and do some stuff like commenting, the token itself is what's gonna be passed to identify the user that's actually coming through. So when we do our login process, we grab that token, we can store that token in cookies or something like that, and then pass that token every single time we do a request that needs authentication. Now, that stuff might not make a whole lot of sense until you actually implement it, but we will test some stuff out and show you generally how it's going to work um, just on a very basic test level so then you can see what we mean and what we're talking about. So let's actually go ahead and do the installation and it's pip install Django REST framework dash JWT. So Django REST framework has one word dash JWT. That is the Python um, or excuse me, the JWT framework basically. And then from here, we just follow the usage as it says. So we're gonna add this REST framework JWT stuff in our authentication classes. So we have had session authentication, now it's J JSON web authentication. If I get rid of this session authentication and try to go to my API um, and go, to, let's make sure the server is running of course. Of course, the comment list is not gonna do anything, but if we click on any particular comment, that also is not doing anything. So let's actually go into our comment list API. So that particular view, the comment list view, and I'm gonna go ahead and comment out, allow any on the permission classes. I'm actually gonna change this to is authenticated, save that, refresh, and now it says authentication credentials were not provided. If I leave it as allow any, it will say this, if I take off that permission class, it will be read only because our setting is, is authenticated or read only. So another thing that we wanna test is just doing is authenticated. So that's gonna be our default is gonna be is authenticated. So any particular view that we wanna change, we're just gonna comment out the allow any to make sure that this is actually working. So this is on allow any. If I comment it out and go back, Refresh, again, authentication credentials were not provided because of a few reasons. Number one, we got rid of session authentication as a class that we could use, and we added JSON web token authentication. So there is still an authentication class, but we just haven't, haven't actually had it yet. And we're doing it for the comment list. This is just for a test. It doesn't have to be done this way, but it's really just a testing version. And notice it says www-authenticate JWT. So that's the auth token that we that it's looking for basically. So what we need to do is actually create a URL that will obtain this auth token for us. So let's following along with the example they have here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this URL and I'm gonna bring it into our blog URLs and I'm gonna put it right above the user token and I'm gonna change these dashes to being auth-token. Of course, you could do user-token, but I'm gonna leave it as this. I like that one a little bit better. I think it's cleaner. And then I'm gonna go ahead and import that view from the REST framework JOT. Notice it's underscore JOT, obtain JOT token. We don't have to create that view, it does it for us. And now we can actually test this out. Of course, we changed the URL slightly, so we are gonna to have to keep that in mind. And we also need to make sure that we use a username and password correctly. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this for a second and we're gonna bring it into, I wanna put it in our settings and I'm just gonna put it underneath this as just a note for myself. This is not where you would actually put it. You would probably make your own file for it um, or just have your test somewhere else. But anyways, we're gonna do this 
and we did API auth token. And right now it says localhost, which is fine, but since we are not using specifically localhost, you are we are using localhost, but I'm gonna use 127 just as we have there. Um, so that's what we'll be working off of, just like this. And now we need an admin or username and password that we have. And I believe we can use CFE and then the password learn code. And then we are gonna go ahead and grab this right here. We're gonna open up a new terminal window and just paste that in. Now curl may not work for you Windows users, but um, for the rest of us, it does. And it gives us back this token. Um, Windows users, if this doesn't work, then um, you're gonna wanna use Python requests to actually do this. But I believe there is something like curl that you can actually use on your Windows computer as well. Uh, but Mac and Linux users, this is what you'll get back, is you'll get this token, and we can go ahead and copy this token. So I'm gonna just paste this token in here, right? Again, it's just literally just some basic tests that we're doing. And then let's go back into the documentation, and we see this new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and, or wait, not that one right there, but we're gonna go into this one right here. So I'm gonna copy this, and we're gonna paste it right underneath it. And it says curl-h, so this is saying, using an auth, uh, authorization header of JWT and your token. So this right here, this whole thing. And then let's go to a specific URL. So if I copy this URL right here and paste it in, and then instead of API auth token, I'm gonna do API comments, and that should give us the comment list. So um, I'm gonna do it first, I'm gonna do it without the token, so I'm gonna, or the header that for that matter. And I'm just gonna cut this out and Copy that, paste, and it gives us back a JSON data saying curl, you know, we did that curl option and it says authentication credentials were not provided. So now if we go ahead and grab those credentials, put them in the token, notice the token's pretty long, so we wanna put it in that curl call. In the header for authorization, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, paste it in, and we actually get the comments coming back. It gives us the count and all that stuff. The things that we've sort of expected to see. Um, so that's pretty cool. That actually works and it allows us to use this authentication token to do all sorts of things. So now I can get that permission class of allow any back on and we'll go back into that call in our settings. We'll use this curl call again and we're gonna go ahead and paste it in. This time it actually all comes back, right? So the, the authentication is not necessary in that case. And of course, if we kept it on is authenticated or read only, got rid of that allow all and did again, it will actually come back. So I'm gonna leave again that is authenticated on. So now that we've got this, let's actually try and create a comment because that's what it's really, really is gonna be valuable for us. So if we go to the comment create, remember how we did this, we did model type, the slug, so the post slug. So it's gonna be type of post, slug, whatever the post is, and then we're gonna leave a parent ID out. And then we also wanna make sure that we're using all the things that we are that we need inside of this serializer class. So I'm gonna look at that serializer class again, and it is content. Content is the thing that we're gonna be passing as well. Um, so let's go ahead and start to design the actual API for that or at least the curl test, I should say, for that. Back into our settings file. I'm gonna copy this, paste it below, and it was comments create, I believe, so let's double check in our URLs. Comments create, that's right. And then we wanna use type equals to post, and slug equals to, well, we need to find a slug for a post that works. Let's make sure our server is still running, and it is in the other terminal window. Let's go into our blog and take a look at the posts. And I'm gonna just do it on my title. We already have a few in there, so let's actually do it on a different one. Let's go ahead and go hi there. This one doesn't have any comments, so we'll use new title as the slug. Go back in here and use slug. Notice I'm creating that git request. And I wanna go back into the comment views to make sure I'm still on the right track. Again, parent ID, we're gonna leave that one out. Okay, that's good. Um, so for the, the get part of the request is handled. The next part is we have to actually add in post data, which is what we're doing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and before the URL, I'm gonna paste this in. So we've got the auth authorization header all the way down to here. And then we're posting some data. In this case, it's gonna be content. 
and we're gonna just write out some content. So this is some content and we're gonna try and actually post this data. So let's see what happens. And we got content, this field is required. So the posted data in that sense, the way we just did it, didn't actually work. So we're gonna have to try something different. Let's go ahead and look at the Jot framework and we see a different kind of way of posting. Notice it gives us a header and it also does the data in a dictionary. So let's try it this way. So I'm gonna add in another header inside of the request as well as this data dictionary. So let's go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to come in here and just paste this out. So content type, we added that header in there. Now we'll say content and we're gonna add in some content, get rid of the password one and say another try. Okay, so let's also see if there's any post data. And yes, of course we need X and post, we still need that. So I'm actually gonna put that at the front again. So we have our two headers and then we have what should be our data. And then finally our URL is at the very end. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, paste it into our terminal. Now it's saying signature has expired. So that is our token has expired. So let's log in again and let's grab another token, which is what we just did. And then I'm gonna change this token out, the old one. Let's just delete what's in the old one completely and paste in that new one. Use this curl again, paste it in. This is not a slug for this content type. So I'm just gonna try and reverse the order for the slug and post. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. Type equals to sl the slug equals to that and type equals to post. Let's try that one more time. If this doesn't work, we're gonna check in our view and still doing it, still giving us that error. Um, and it looks like the actual post went away. Maybe we didn't copy this correctly. So let's try that again. And the post is there, but the actual request is, is cutting it off for some reason. Um, so we're gonna add another thing. So curls a little finicky. We're gonna just add quotes around the URL. That probably will solve the problem for us. So let's go ahead and copy this, paste it in, and there we go. So we've got our content. Um, yeah, granted I did try it another time. So it actually is showing up. And if we go into that post itself, which was this one, we've got another try and another try. And that content is giving back us an ID. So let's go ahead and grab that ID and go into our URL and just say, and parent ID equals to that new ID. And we'll say in our data, we'll write content some reply to another try. And we'll go ahead and copy this and paste it in there. Refresh and we should see that one of these has a reply. So let's go into the thread. Oops, not that one, but the top one has a reply. So we'll go into the thread and we see that the comment came through. Now it's coming through as our CFE user, which was, if you remember, our default user. So let's go ahead and register a brand new user. And I'm just gonna say um, another user and maybe one, two, three. And I'm just gonna use this throughout. And that's another user, one, two, three, very good. So that's now our user. So we're gonna try the login process again and that's gonna be username. Um, I'm gonna paste this down here. So we're gonna do that whole process one more time. Curl the username of another user, one, two, three, with that password, get that token. So let's go ahead and do that. There's the token. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this token. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the actual post URL. I'm gonna copy this and paste it after. Um, so the ordering for this stuff is not really that necessary but I'm just gonna keep it as is. Copy this token and paste it in. There we go. And then we'll try another reply. So we'll just say uh, my new reply to another try. Um, so that's that last one. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, paste that in. And it looks like it was successfully created. So let's go ahead and take a look, go to hi there another try, the thread, 
and there we go it's actually showing us our other user cool so that is definitely working since we have this stuff i'm going to go ahead and in our blog settings i'm just going to do curl underscore tests dot pi and i'm just going to bring it in here because we really don't want it in our settings so i'm going to go ahead and cut that out and just put curl tests in there and that is now our way to actually test this out now, of course, there's a lot other settings that you might do to your JSON web token. Uh, but some things to keep in mind is you might need a refresh token. If you remember when the token expired, you can actually run through and use that. Um, you can also verify the token. If you use this and a 200 status comes back, that means the token's good. But you can set all of these settings up here. Um, and you can do it in a very similar fashion that we did before. But that's pretty much where we're at as far as the... Um, json web token is concerned this is something we will definitely use on our client side so if you have any questions on this let us know in the comments below otherwise let's keep going